What is up guys and welcome back to the Coasters Unscripted Podcast. I'm your host Andrew from Coaster Thrills joined by my co-host Caleb from oh no did he do it did he do it again? Oh okay okay guys I'm getting word uh Caleb's not here today <laughs> um yeah so <laughs> uh, a little bit of rocky start for today uh yes but Caleb, unfortunately, will not be able to make it for this episode of the podcast, so this is episode 9, um, oh, we're already 9 episodes in, this is crazy, but yeah, obviously, uh, Caleb will not be able to make it, which is a little saddening, um, apparently, um, he's going to SeaWorld today instead, so, you know, SeaWorld, always a good excuse, any park is really a good excuse, but, um, I mean, if he's family's gonna go can't pass up the opportunity so unfortunately for this week um i will be uh having to do the podcast all alone yeah come on caleb come on what are you doing <laughs> but get you know, all that all that aside i'm actually filming this on a saturday which um and it's so different and there's another reason uh so obviously we normally film this on thursday so uh caleb's not available even on thursday so um, we're going to do this on Saturday, but, I mean, here we are, it's, we're filming this on Saturday right now, but then, now, uh, Caleb's going to SeaWorld, so we couldn't do it, so, um, there's that, uh, this is, this is really why we like to do it on Thursday, just he couldn't do it on Thursday this week, so, um, here I am, and I'm excited to, you know, go with this episode, I'm excited to, uh, connect, uh, with the viewers a little more, obviously, I am the host of this podcast, so, um, so it's more of a time I feel like I can connect. Uh, I feel like the there's only one other time in this podcast when I actually did this uh, all by myself, which I think that was like the second ever episode uh, that we ever did, and that was by myself. So um, that really gave me a warm up uh, to try to be more into a podcast form, and I feel like I've uh, really gone after that, and I feel like I've really gotten more into the mood of doing a podcast, and I feel like I've uh, really improved, or at least I'm trying to improve on how. Um, I'm going through this podcast. I'm trying to eliminate all the dead spots and uh, really just connect with the viewers. Uh, obviously, as I said, unfortunate for Caleb and not to be here, but um, we'll just see how it goes. Uh, this episode's probably going to be, uh, you know, a little bit shorter than the other episodes because on the other episodes we got really like we got Caleb to you know bounce off of, make the conversation. So uh, this time it's only me, so more of a solo effort. But I'm excited to see how this goes. But um, you know, what have I, uh, been doing recently? Um, you know, I, I haven't been to as many, well, I have, uh, I could, uh, I was maybe just, was thinking about going to a park today, but I didn't really do that, but I have, uh, been having some fun recently at some parks. Um, you know, last Saturday, about a week ago from today, um, I went to Bush Gardens, uh, last Friday, not yesterday, but last Friday, the week before that, um, went to Universal, got to go to Fun Spot and Universal, got to go to Go-Karts, that was actually with Caleb, so, um, some funny stories from that, um, I mean, obviously, we got some good Velocicoaster night rides, and let me tell you, like, right now, Velocicoaster is running so, I mean, it is running so flipping good, like, those are probably, like, the fastest night rides I've ever gotten on it, and it was just so unbeatable, I got front row and back row, uh, I feel like we really haven't given, like, Velocicoaster its credit in the podcast, but later in the episode, I definitely will have, but, um, so, a Velocicoaster, great ride, but man, it was running so fast, front row on a night ride, oh, that is so unbeatable, the speed, the elements all, like, packed together, um, that is just insane, like, Velocicoaster was running so good, which, um, it's a funny story, um, the other day, um, when we were at Universal, um, uh, it was at the end, so, um, we were gonna get, uh, last, uh, Caleb actually was with us, as I said, but, uh, we were going to get, um, last ride in Coaster, but, um, I guess Caleb, he really wanted to do Hollywood Rip Ride Rocket, so, um, uh, we kind of split our ways, so he went to do Rip Ride Rocket, I did Velocicoaster, uh, I would think I would definitely say, uh, my opinion, or my choice of that night was a little bit better, because Velocicoaster Night Rides, um, was... Just so unbeatable, but what actually Caleb did, um, he went to Hollywood Rift Ride Rocket, and it was like, what was it, 20 minutes till closing, and he got, like, three rides on Rift Ride Rocket, which is just mind-boggling, in my opinion, like, that is just insane, he got three rides on it, I think the third ride, I think, uh, the employees let him get on a little bit later, so, there's that, he got three rides, he listened to some good songs, I remember him, t- him telling me all about it, 
But, um, yeah, that night was great. Uh, before Universal, we got um, to go to Fun Spot. Um, that was actually the night my Top 25 premiered. So if you listen to the last podcast, um, we did a couple of mentions to that video. So definitely go uh, watch it now. Uh, it's de- it's now out. Actually, it was out when the last episode was. We just filmed it before the thing was out. So, um, yeah, definitely go watch the Top 25. I worked so much in it. It'll probably be the last time I ever mentioned that on this podcast. So... Uh, there's that. Just one more plug for my channel. You don't care, but still. Um, yeah, I, we got to listen to the premiere. I uh, got to do that. Uh, but we did, did go to Fun Spot. We did some go-kart racing. I obviously beat Caleb. I like... <laughs> no, I'm sure I got, I'm not that better than him, but come on. I think I'm better than him in go-karts. But um, I, f- I feel like I, go-karts are just so fun. Like, at any park, like... Like, any park, like... I know Fun Spot probably has the best go karts, but I feel like if there's go karts at any park, it's a must do. I mean, if it's an upcharge, yeah, probably skip them. But um, like at some parks, like one park I went to was in Arizona called Castles and Coasters, um, and they had a really a cool go kart racing track. So I did that. It was super fun. The only downside about go kart racing is that the operations are really slow. So if there's a long line, uh. You may not even get any rides, but you could probably just get one at max. That just tells you how bad the capa- the capacity is. Like, on go-karts, it's probably, like, five in a row. So, it's either five, ten, or, like, fifteen uh, carts or people you can, like, that can sit in it. So, not the best capacity, but did the go-karts. Go-karts are so fun, in my opinion. And at the end of the night, um, we capped it all off with the um, a milkshake at... What was it? Tooth Sum? I think that's the name of it. Uh, it's like my third milkshake there. But, you know, their milkshakes are absolutely delicious. And we had a really fun night. So that's basically what I have been doing recently. Um, been having a... a my, I've been definitely living life, you know. Uh, I, I've been doing great. I, I really have. <laughs> so, um, if you may know, I think we may just, just may be going a little unscripted on this podcast like I already did. But... Uh, what's coming up? I mean, this week. Like, if you're a fan of the Lightning and NHL, um, I'm a fan of the Lightning. Uh, the Lightning are playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. So I won't go into into depth of that because this isn't the Kosher podcast. Same with like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Like, that's coming out this Thursday. Like, or at least I'm seeing it this Thursday, dude. I am beyond hype. Like, I know if you're an MCU fan, um. I mean, you probably are hype as well. I am so open hype for this movie. There's been a couple clips about it that I've already watched. And, dude, I am just so hype. I'm so excited for Multiverse of Madness. In my opinion, it probably could one of be one of the best MCU movies. I'm really excited to see what um Sam, Ra- Sam Raimi does. Uh, I know people have said it's definitely a Sam, Sam Raimi film. Like, uh, like some of the other directors in other studios, like... They didn't really get full creative control, but I feel like I've heard people say the Sam Raimi did, and I'm so excited for him, so excited to see his movie. The creative about uh, Multiverse of Madness is going to be so, so incredible, and man, I'm just so excited to see what he can do with this movie, and the full creative control he has, I'm just so flipping excited. I know a lot of people, are, some of my friends are really excited, and I'm excited to see what happens. I know it's coming out. Um, this Thursday, and I'm so excited to get to see that on opening day, and I'm just so hyped. Uh, obviously, I know a lot of friends who are excited, so there's that. But enough rambling. Uh, let's jump in to our first segment of the podcast. This is the every podcast segment, the news. Now, uh, we have a little more news than last time, but still not as much. Uh, I feel like this news uh, this week won't be as good because I'm not fully knowledgeable on some of this information, but maybe... Uh, I may become more knowledgeable as the podcast goes on. Uh, so that this is one of the times when Caleb really comes in handy, and obviously, um, you know, he does know some more news than me, so uh, we'll just have to see. But our first bit of news: um, Tarzan's Treehouse, located, I think it's at both Disney, I think it's both Disney World and Disneyland, it's both the Magic Kingdoms, or maybe I'm wrong, but uh, they will be getting a new name or a new retheme. Uh. I feel like this would be a cool opportunity. Obviously, uh, Disney is always innovating, and I'm really excited to see what they can do with it. Uh, Tarzan's Treehouse. I know it's not like it's not like an e-ticket attraction, but still, like for what it is, I love that thing. I've gone up that thing so many times, especially when I've been younger and going over to Disney World and Magic Kingdom. Uh, I've had so much fun that thing, and I'm excited with, to see what they can do. Uh, obviously, Disney 
It was really good for theming, so we'll have to wait and see. I'm excited to see what they can do with it. But this is probably next or next bit of news. This is probably the biggest uh, bit of news of the week. Uh, this is obviously, as you know, um, Orion uh, is a band of giga coaster located at Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. Now, here's the really interesting thing. Um, I'll, I'll just go into what say what happened. Um, basically, uh, as the train, I th- correct me if I'm not fully 100% correct, but basically as the train was starting to go up the lift, I guess one of the other trains uh, went through the station uh, and the brakes didn't hit, so it bumped into the other train. Now, this isn't a major accident. Nobody was injured, uh, fortunately. Um, but it's really weird because from what I've heard, I think this is the fourth time that in the past a couple years that Cedar Fair has had trains bump. I mean, obviously it happened on Val Raven, uh, Steel Vengeance, and now this. And there might have been another one, but uh, and I, there was another one. I just don't know which one. But yeah, the trains bumped, uh, and all three of them, I think no one was injured, so that's good. But um, yeah, the trains bumped, and there was a little bit of damage to it. Uh, not as much damage because it was definitely moving at a slower pace, but something about it, it's just, I, I think it was just the brakes were just not uh, working to their full potential, which is really weird because B&M uh, has a near perfect track record, uh, get it, track record, but um, that was terrible, but uh, yeah, B&M's been really safe, so it's really weird to see this happen, uh, it might just be Cedar Fair and the way they've been doing it, but um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just an odd situation, it's happened with some of these other coasters, but, um, we'll just have to, uh, wait and see what comes out of it, um, uh, yeah, so there's that, but, obviously, uh, now's the time when Kale would bounce off my opinion, and make the podcast a little more interesting, but, as I said earlier, it's just me, but, uh, that is it for that bit of the news, but for our next bit of news, we are heading over to Tokyo Disneyland, or Disneyland Tokyo, <laughs> whatever you pronounce it. I think it's Tokyo Disneyland for uh, you Disney fans. But, as you all know, Space Mountain is one of their more uh, important attractions located at the Tokyo Disneyland uh, Resort. Um, obviously, a Disney Sea is way a better park, but uh, Space Mountain located at the Disneyland part of the uh, resort Um this thing will be closing in 2024 and reopening back up in 2027 as they will be re-theming it. Um, so obviously, uh, this is, I think this is such a, a good job done by Disney. Um, this ride probably really needs it. I've heard it's been aging a little bit. It's not special compared to the other Space Mountains. So I'm really excited to see what they do with this. So we I think it's just going to be more of an updated space theme, especially with, I think they're retheming a lot of the Tomorrowland part, and they're going to update a lot of it, of this section of the park, so I think this would be really cool, I'm excited to see what they can do with it, um, a retheme of this thing looks really nice, make it more futuristic, and maybe, I think, I'm not sure if they'll be updating some of the track parts of it, but they'll be retheming a lot, uh, bringing it at a whole new exterior, and I feel like this will be really cool, I'm so excited to see what they can do with it, and I, I really am just happy to see that they've been putting some, um, some investments into this park, I think they just got Beauty and the Beast, or a new expansion, or whatever, but it's nice to see that they'll be updating this classic attraction, so, um, so I think this, uh, Space Mountain opened in 1983 when the park opened, so it's really nice that it's getting a revamp, and I'm excited to see what they can do with it, but moving on, um, this is, uh, <laughs> definitely have been a short news segment, but moving on to our next bit of news, Da Vinci's Cradle, as you all know, is one of their classic rides located at Busch Gardens Williamsburg, but the sad bit of this part is that it will be closing. Um, I think it might have already closed, I'm not sure, but Da Vinci's Cradle is one of the classic rides there, and it'll be closing, so um, it's a little sad. Uh, it's definitely been a fan favorite to some people there, and it's really been uh, something just to add more atmosphere to the park, so it's really unfortunate to see uh, why they're closing this, but um, I mean, I'm not sure, exactly sure why they're closing it. It might just be because of the maintenance issues or just not bringing in enough people. But it's just a little sad to see that. Um, not too much to say there. Uh, yeah, but there's that. I mean, a Busch Gardens Zillingsburg is... It's tough to say. Like, I really rank this park pretty high. But 
Um, their coaster collection, some of the rides collection is not the best. I know they just got Pantheon, so uh, that probably will change my opinion so much. But I mean, since the last time I was there, it was last summer, so Pantheon wasn't open. Like Pantheon really added so much to the park. It really gave it a number one coaster because, at least in my opinion, before Pantheon, there was not really a good number one coaster at the park. Um, for me, it definitely wasn't Apollo's Chariot because Apollo's Chariot is not the best in my opinion. Um, it's probably my least favorite hyper, and it doesn't deliver as much airtime as I really remember it too when I first wrote it back in 2016. But uh, the this atmosphere of this park is really nice. That's probably one of the best things about it. But now they got a new number one Pantheon. Um, some may say, like, I think it was my favorite Alpine guys before Pantheon opened. I think that was my favorite. Um, but I feel like without Pantheon, the lineup of this park is really just uh, meh. I, I mean... It has a lot of good supporting coasters. It's just the one thing that didn't make their coaster lineup great is that they did not have a number one coaster. And now they have that with Pantheon. So I feel like their coaster collection is way better now. But um, I'm, I'm just so excited to ride Pantheon. Like, I think I'll be riding Pantheon this summer possibly. I'm just so excited. Um, if you, Might as well just go over my... Uh, this would be the first time going over my summer plans. So... Um, this is all I'm um, hopeful. We're really hopeful about this. Bulls have to see. Um, some of the plans we have uh, is a Texas trip. As you'll know, we sp- spoke about that so much for the podcast. So that's Caleb and I. So I won't go too much into that. But the main trip for me, um, obviously Caleb will not be going on this. But my main trip is, yes, it is overseas. Dude, this is the second time I've been overseas on a trip to parks. The other one was in 2018 to England and France, and in Spain actually, in a cruise. But this is more of a coaster trip. And I guess I'll just announce it right now. For this summer, the main trip is 2022 coastering Northern Europe. Yeah, I said it. We're going to Northern Europe. We're going to go through so many parks. I have so many parks listed. I think it's more than 20. Um, and obviously, some of y'all might not care, but it's more stories to get in the podcast. If you follow uh, some of our, my Instagram, my YouTube, it uh, is more content to put out. It's going to be so fun. We're going to Belgium, Netherlands, Sweden, Denmark, Germany, of course, in Poland. It all depends on Poland what happens there, but we're going to all these countries, going to go to so many great parks. Um, when I'm saying we're, it's me and my dad, so just to give you more context in that, but we'll be going to so many parks. Um, we'll be going to Fantasialand, Europa Park, Energylandia, uh, what is it? There's Lisiburg, Wallaby Holland, Wallaby Belgium, Colmarden, Groenland, uh, Heidi Park, Hansa Park, Movie Park, Germany, oh, there is so much, a trip drill, I mean, Toverland, there's so many flipping parks, and, uh, as the time comes, uh, as we get closer and closer to it, I will announce, uh, the schedule of the trip, the same with, goes with the Texas trip, the Europe trip, and, uh, we have, I think we have one more big trip we'll be going on, and this is actually with Caleb, all depending on if he can go, um, this is the end of summer trip, so, what we're really thinking about doing here, uh, we're thinking about going to Cedar Point, Kings Island, Kentucky Kingdom, Holiday World, uh, possibly Dollywood, possibly Kennywood, and maybe Indiana Beach. Uh, I know, it's a packed summer. And also, just maybe a little trip to Kings Dominion, Busch Gardens, Williamsburg to ride Pantheon. So that's, it's going to be a really packed summer. Like, May starts tomorrow, or actually tomorrow is the time this uh, podcast releases. So as this podcast releases, it'll be May 1st, but... Wow, it, it it's already getting to May, like, it's already, like, beginning, like, starting to begin summer. Dude, I'm so fucking hype. Uh, me and Caleb go to the same school, so it'll be getting out uh, around May 25th, I think, or 26th, I think that's the date. So, uh, from then to about August 8th, it's parks all day, every day. I'm not, not actually, but um, there's that. It's probably a boring part of the podcast, but still. Uh, we're going unscripted, and that's the part of this podcast. But moving on to our next segment, uh, really unfortunate that Caleb couldn't make this, but this is our ride rankings. And for this one, it is a more of a tough ranking for me to do, but it is going to be a good one. That is for sure. But 
This is, drum roll please, but <laughs> that was terrible. But top ten drop towers out there. Now these, I'll go off the ones I've written, but I've pretty much written every single drop tower uh, that's really good in the U.S. Now obviously Europe has a lot of drop towers that are really good, but that's why I'm not going in the world for this. But here we are. I'm excited to do this. A top ten drop towers. Let's go. Moving in to the 10 spot. This is Fearfall, or pretty much all of the Fearfall clones, uh, located at Kentucky Kingdom. Now, as you all know, um, these are the ones that take you up and then just immediately drop you. Like, well, it, not immediately, but just when you go up there, there's this sense of not knowing when you're going to drop, and without you knowing, you just drop. And that drop on these things are so flipping powerful. I love these drop towers so much and obviously there's some of the other parks uh these are more common at smaller parks uh i wouldn't say the kentucky kingdom is a small park but at other parks these are a little more common uh one of the other ones i think it's at knobles and these things even though they're smaller than some of the other ones they're really just even though they're, they're a little bit shorter um i still love these they have this sudden feeling of a drop, and I feel like the drop on these type of drop towers are just so powerful, and that is why they're taking the number 10 spot. But, uh, honorable mention, um, I wouldn't, you may or may not put this in the drop towers category, but Demon Drop, uh, located at Dorney Park, uh, that, I think that made my 11th spot, so, uh, say that as you will, drop tower or not, it made my 11th spot. But, moving on to the 9th spot, we have... Drop line, which technically it's not really operating right now. We all know the reason to that, but it normally is drop line located at Dollywood. Um, I love this ride so much. It's 200 feet up in the air and then plummets, so you get a great view. And I just love this ride so much. I definitely think it takes the number nine spot. Um, as the other ones have, it's a really powerful drop, and the feeling of you just sitting up there, getting the whole view of Dollywood, I mean, the views on this thing are absolutely fantastic, really makes it one of my favorite drop towers, especially for uh, how good the drop is and all of that, but moving on to number eight, uh, we have something that maybe some of you, a lot of people haven't really experienced, this is Big Shot, located at Stratosphere, now, on paper, it's not a good drop tower. Come on, it's an SNS mini drop tower, which it doesn't. It's SNS's drop towers. This is the only SNS drop tower to make this list, so that just tells you that um, their drop towers are more basic. Uh, you see a lot of those at uh, some of the bigger parks, like uh, Six Flags. Six Flags has a, lot, has a lot of SNS drop towers, Power Tower, Cedar Point, but um, they're not as good in my opinion. Uh, but the one that makes this thing good is. It is at the Stratosphere, and as you all know, the Stratosphere is a hotel located in Las Vegas, infamous, or not infamous, just whatever, just known in general for these absolutely insane rides. Like, there's that one, I forgot the names of the one, one of them is Insanity or whatever, that just take advantage of the height, uh, I think this is about a thousand feet tall or something, they take advantage of the height, um, and there you are, I'm not sure if it's a thousand, I think, I don't, I I'm correcting myself, it's definitely not a thousand when you think about it, but, um, you were just sitting up there, and for having a drop tower that high is just absolutely terrifying, it's mental, it's just, it is absolutely insane, and that is solely the main reason on why this thing is so flipping good, but taking our number seven spot is the tallest drop tower in the world that is operating, this is Zoom in Jaro, Drop of Doom. Now, if I have, fortunately, if I had, fortunately gotten the chance to ride, um, what is it, uh, Dr. Doom, uh, at Six Flags Magic Mountain, which is really funny, every time I go there, this thing is closed, I probably would have ranked this at the same spot, but, uh, since I have not been able to ride that, which is really weird, uh, every time I've gone there, which is so many times I haven't been able to ride it, it will not be making this list, but, so this will pretty much, uh, take it for that as well, but Zoomanjaro is operating right now, so it is the tallest co uh, drop tower in the world, but, um, I feel like this thing is still flipping good, um, because I feel like for the height it has, it can maybe just be executed a little bit better, uh, the drop's not the best, but, 
you're just falling forever. Uh, even though the drop may not be as powerful, you get a really long drop, and you are just free, like, floating down, and the height is really used to its advantage. You are just falling forever, and that height is looking straight off on this King to Cost structure is just so fantastic, and really, um, I love this drop tower. Uh, I've run it so many times. That, well, it was closed for a little bit, like, when I went, what was it, 2020 or something? But now that I just wrote it last summer, it's so great. But moving on to a number six now. To a lot of people, I think this may seem a little bit low, but I don't think so because I still think this slip ride is absolutely fantastic. And just the quality of drop towers I have done is just phenomenal. But uh, a little unfortunate this ride is being a little bit low, but here we are. Taking my number six spot is Falcon's Fury, located at Bush Gardens, Tampa. Now, even though... Uh, yeah, this thing does take number one, number six spot. The reason I think this thing doesn't, um, go a little higher is that it does tilt you, which I feel like the thing I look for in a really good drop tower is the fact that you are just give the weightlessness, weightlessness feeling. As you, some of you who have ridden drop towers and stuff, you get what I used to call it when I was little, a tummy feeling, which there's that. But, uh, you get this feeling in your stomach that when you're falling, it's just, it gives like a weightlessness feeling to you. It's really hard to describe, but it's something I really like in some of these coasters. And this coaster doesn't, not coaster, not, what am I saying? Not coasters, drop towers. But this drop tower doesn't really deliver on that. That's why it's at number six, but still, uh, I absolutely love this. It really does freak out a lot of people. And the height, as the as these other drop towers, is really used to its advantage. And Falcon's Fury is such a world-class attraction. And it's really one of the best flats, flat rides, including drop towers, out there. But moving on to our number five spot. This is probably the most, or the second most, or whatever, probably the most secluded drop tower out there. This is Haunted Mind Drop. Located at Glenwood Caverns. Now, um, I know there has been some controversy. I think I had that accident about that. But still, this ride is absolutely such a flipping gem. Like, you could not describe this thing any better. It is such a gem. And I know a lot of people don't even recognize it or don't even know about this. Which, you really should. It's located at Glenwood Caverns. And this ride is so fantastic. The theming to go along with that is just so, so cool. And... The fact that when I rode it in 2019, like, it only had seatbelts, that just made the experience just insane. Like, only having a seatbelt and dropping, like, down a cavern, going into the rocks, like, that is just mind-boggling. This thing was so creative with how they did it. The theming is top-notch. The theming is right. is so good. And I get how some people, like Taylor, who has ridden it, uh, Kale from Coaster Studios, if you don't know about him, um... I get how he says this is number one drop tower. It's it's such a gem, and I love this thing two bits. It is so good. But taking the number five spot is another coast. Another coast. What am I? I keep saying coaster for some reason. But another drop tower that is in um this four. No, this is number four. Sorry, but is another a uh, drop tower in the form of Haunted Mind Drop. This is Gravity Bomb, located at Bigfoot Adventure Park or. Bigfoot on in Branson or whatever. This small park located in Branson, Missouri. And they have a gravity bomb. Such an incredible drop tower. The view of this thing is absolute madness. I remember riding it when it was dark outside. It was scary to be at like that high. At like that dark outside. It was so scary. But with this thing having the seatbelt. It is it is absolute madness it is so good i feel like this is definitely better than haunted mind drop just because uh you can actually feel the height which is contrary to which uh haunted mind drop you just drop immediately um but this thing barely takes over just because with haunted mind drop you had the theming this thing uh just is a drop tower but even though this thing is very ho much higher than haunted mind drop uh, but yeah, this thing is so insane. It is absolute madness, and I love this thing. And that is why it is taking my number fourth spot on my drop towers. Now, as we move into the top three, um, there is only one more drop tower that is just a simple drop tower to make this list. And um, yeah, uh, Disney is on this list, but we'll just have to wait and see. Taking... My number third spot is my favorite classic drop tower. And I know 
may come a little bit of controversy to this. I know for a lot of people, this isn't their favorites, but this is actually two drop towers. And these are the Cedar Fair Intamin Gyro Drops. This is Drop Tower at King's Island and Drop Tower at King's Dominion. Now, I personally prefer the one at King's Island a lot, but I feel like these are the Drop Towers that really just, like, are the epitome of a Drop Tower. It gives you the feeling of drops, I feel like, better than anything else. You get so much weightlessness, and it's so scary. These things are so tall, and the drops on these Drop Towers are probably the most powerful drops I have ever experienced. It is... So, so fun. I love these things so much. Uh, I know someone, uh, Logan from Throws United works, or used to work, um, the drop tower at King's Island, and yeah, this thing is such a gem. Uh, I think the one at King's Dominion drops you a little bit longer, so you break a little bit closer to the ground, but still, uh, I think I like the King's Island Trust one a little bit better, but still, both these rides are so good, so high, such a powerful drop feeling, and I love them so much. But moving on to my number two spot, now, I really could switch up my number one and two. I love both of these drop towers, but taking my number two spot is Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Now, I know a lot of people uh, may prefer this over Tower of Terror. Uh, I definitely prefer Tower of Terror a little bit more. Oh yeah, spoiler alert for number one, but um, I, f I still like this ride so much. I feel like uh, both of these rides excel. I feel like um, Guardians uh, has more. Uh, I th definitely, Guardians, in my opinion, has the better ride cycle, has a better a drop section, so the drops are way better, but I feel like in Tower of Terror, you have more, I feel like the more atmosphere and theming of it, it's just a little bit better because it's the classic Tower of Terror and Twilight Zone theme uh, with all of you know, that, and that one pre-section before the main drop, I feel like that is a little bit more towards why Tower of Terror will win this uh, ranking, but still, Guardians is such a fun ride, it's one of my favorites in all of Disneyland, um, the drops are so fun, this ride is just the definition of fun, the theming is really cool, especially with it being themed to the Guardians, and I definitely think this one is better than the previous Tower of Terror that used to be in this spot, now, as you, as I just said, uh, I did ride the other Tower of Terror that, um, before they rethemed to the Guardians, which I did think that was really cool, but I think this is just a little bit better, especially with them updating this whole park. I feel like it was definitely needed, and they really did so good with it. The theme of this ride is so fantastic, and I really love this ride to bits, but as we make it to the number one spot, as they already said, I already spoiled it, sadly, but, um, this is, of course, Tower of Terror located at Disney World in Florida, at Disney's Hollywood Studios, uh, as I said, the atmosphere of this ride is so fantastic. That whole pre-section before the drop of, like, the Twilight Zone and you go through that section. Uh, the, the way this ride works is just so cool. I love this ride so much. I've loved it so, so much. I can't even imagine how many times I've done it since I've been to Disney World so many times. Um, I just really, this holds a special place in my heart. It is so good. Uh... But there's that. That is the rankings of my top 10 favorite drop towers. Now, for the thrill, obviously, um, some of the rides before the two Disney drop towers to make this list, the thrill of those are way better, but I feel like you could almost put Tower of Terror and Guardians in, like, a separate, like, section, as, like, they aren't really, like, completely a classic type of drop towers. They're more Disney rides, so they're definitely better for rides, in my opinion. I absolutely love uh, Disney and all of what they do, so... But I feel like for the thrill, these things wouldn't even make the top 10. Even though some of their rise section is still good, uh, some of the other drop towers for the thrill is better. Other than maybe just Big Shot or whatever. But um, still, that is it for the ride rankings of my top 10 drop towers. Uh, nothing, nothing to really go unscripted here. So let's move on to the next segment. As our next segment is, of course, as always, Ride Opinion. Now... For our right opinion today, or not even our opinion, this is my opinion, this is Manta, located at Ciro Orlando. Now, um, there's this, I think, uh, I'll just go over Caleb's real quick. Caleb ranked it as, or gave it a score of 9. I don't remember what his rank was, it was probably in his top 20, I think that's what he said, but there's Caleb, I'll just speak for him in this part of the, uh, 
episode, but for my opinion on Manta, um, for its overall score, I will give it an 8 out of 10. Uh, still, 8 out of 10 is absolutely a, a solid score. Um, just in my opinion, uh, uh, being a flying coasters aren't exactly my thing. I definitely think Tatsu is better than Manta. But they aren't exactly my thing. Um, I like better. I think I like coasters more with airtime and stuff and all that stuff like RMCs. RMCs are really my type of rides, but still, um, I absolutely adore Manta. I mean, I've ridden this so many times. I can't even imagine how many times I've run this, and it's just so intense. If I had to give this thing one thing, uh, one compliment, the same with a lot of these other BNM flying coasters, is that it is so intense. Uh, especially that pretzel loop. I mean, that pretzel loop in the back row is um so good, and I'm really glad I just in this episode I'm being able to give uh this coaster a spotlight. Uh, that it's not as high in my rankings of the Florida coasters, but still. Um, it is good, but speaking of rankings, for my rank of it, it is, this is not exact, uh, as we get out of the top 12, top 25 and more, um, my ride rankings are not 100% accurate, but the way it is placed right now, this thing is 136 in my rankings now. Um, up or down, I feel like this thing could even go up a little bit, but it depends, I've ridden 608 coasters, so, um, I feel like... For it being 139, or not 139, but 136, I feel like that is uh, more of achievement than you may realize. Obviously, if you've ridden like 150 coasters, for this thing to be ranked at 136, uh, you know, not the biggest achievement. But for it, for how many coasters I've ridden, which is 608, I feel like this ride really is good. And I feel like it's uh, gone up in... But really, like, as we're on the subject, I mean, is it just me, or is, is Sealed Orlando just really becoming such a world-class park? I know it's already been ranked, like, really high in some of the rankings. I think it's, like, USA Today, or correct me if I'm wrong if that's not the case, but they rank this park, like, so high. But really, like, if you really think about it, this park is really going. Like, it is going up and up, like... They just added Icebreaker, and now they're already adding, like, a 2023 coaster, like, in the Surf Coaster. Uh, this coaster collection is just going to be insane. Let's say, like, 10 years, and, like, um, there's maybe an even more rides, like, in between that. This ride collection will be insane. Like, uh, you I mean, you have Ice, Icebreaker, you have Mako, Manta, Kraken, Journey to Atlantis, which is a good family coaster. You have the Surf Coaster and a Kitty Coaster, and with them, like, adding on to that, this... This park is really just going to be fantastic. Um, I know some people, like, I'm really surprised. Like, some of my friends, like, don't rank SeaWorld that high, but I absolutely love this park. I mean, it's not the best. Uh, you had, you have some of the experiences there that may not be the best, but the ride collection, and I'm depending the atmosphere of this park is still absolutely fantastic. So, especially for it being my home park, or at least one of my home parks, uh, that's for sure. But I feel like for the way it is, like, it's just... Fantastic. I'm so excited to see what they do with it. And for it being my home park, as I said, uh, it's really going to be great. Uh, just I Actually, um, the other, what was it, last Monday, or the Monday before that, I went to go see the Bantam Surf Coaster track, which is so cool. I think they just added supports, which is just so cool. Um, that since they've already, like, if you go and see this in person, and I know a lot of you people, you can't, but uh, going to see this track in person is just so cool. It is so cool to just see... Um, the color, the color of the track looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you've seen the new news of the supports actually arriving, um, you will see. It's actually probably should go in the news segment, but um, you can see that it's pretty much Emperor's colors except flipped around. Like the supports are kind of like a really like really like light blue or maybe just a little bit grayish to them, and then you have the track which is just really like good blue, which or light blue, whatever it is. But, um, yeah, I, I, it's kind of, it's just Emperor's Colors just swapped around. Like, now it's the track that it's, like, that more blue. Which, if you really like, make a comparison, it's really cool. But seeing this track in person is just so cool. As I said, I got to see it the other day. And, um, it's just really cool to see it. Like, the track looks such big in person. And, obviously, with that whole land clearing, uh, they've got a lot of land cleared. And I feel like... Once they add this, it will really make this park so well-rounded in the layout part of it. I mean, now with Icebreaker and the Surf Coaster being added, it adds some more some more attractions in that area. But um, I like something I really think this park could need is some more flats. Like, 
Uh, at SeaWorld San Antonio, you have, what is it, the Scream and Swing. You have, like, one of those pendulum rides or whatever that goes you up, uh, the, I think it goes upside down, actually, one of those Frisbees or whatever they are. But they have a couple of those flats. And I feel like um, SeaWorld Orlando is in desperate need of a flat. I mean, you don't have, like, a Scream and Swing, you, which I think it probably, uh, my guess is that you're going to get the Surf Coaster next year. And probably in the year after that, we're getting a Scream and Swing. Even if Busch Gardens Tampa is adding one next year, I feel like we'll get just another one. Um, but yeah, Stewart Orlando is in desperate need of flats. So yes, you have the Sky Tower, but you don't have the Scream and Swing, like I said. Um, you don't have a Drop Tower, which you, they really need a Drop Tower, uh, that's for sure. They don't really have any good flats, which other other than the kitty area, there's that. But we're just going unscripted, uh, go through that every podcast, but yes, let's move on to the next segment, this is the infamous unpopular opinion, now, staying in the SeaWorld chain with this unpopular opinion, in my opinion, Electric Eel is the best, Skyrocket 2, oh, 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 Tigress, Tigress, yeah, Tigress, yeah, I think it's better than Tigress, uh, that's for sure, even though Tigress may have the soundtrack, this thing does too, and with how powerful this thing is, I feel like the reason I like this coaster this much is the night rides I got on this thing. I got the last time I rode this was back in November, and the night rides on the Skyrocket Two were just so good. Uh, the twisting up in the air, seeing San Diego at night, is just unbeatable. Uh, this park has some great night rides. The same with Banta. Um, their other uh, mock, uh, their other launch coaster, this mock um, multi-launch and. Yeah, Electric Eel is so good. Uh, and kind of an unpopular opinion. Before I just got these um, rides in Electric Eel, I actually liked Phobia Fear Coaster better, which uh, I feel like the main reason I liked Phobia better is because it has the lap bars, even though I have done Superman at Discovery Kingdom. But uh, yeah, Electric Eel really just overtook it. And Electric Eel is just so good. I love this thing so much. And Skyrocket 2 is like, these clones, in my opinion, are just so underrated. And I feel like um, it's it is it's good for them to be cloned. I feel like these are one of the rides, uh, just like the Raptors and the Batman clones. I feel like they're you know good to be cloned. So uh, there's that for the unpopular opinion. And let's move in to our last segment of the podcast. Now, as you know, I did skip one. Uh, I'm gonna save this one for the next episode. Um, this is, of course, uh, the reimagined. Uh, we have a really good one for next week. Uh, just make sure to stay tuned for that. I skipped this one because I know we want to have Caleb for this, uh, and I'm real excited for y'all to see this next week in the tenth episode. I mean, come on, we're already the tenth episode, which is really insane. But this is for our last segment of the podcast, the ride bracket. Now, as you know, last episode. We had the final battle. So, as uh, just to give you a little bit of a um, pre pre whatever, but um, we will not be starting a new p- uh, bracket this week. I'm gonna wait till next week for Caleb. So there's that. But we will be concluding this ride bracket of the U.S. Intamin coasters. Now we had that matchup last week of El Toro and Velocicoaster, but. Caleb and I decided to step away from this vote, and we let you, the viewers, vote. So, what was the result? Versus El Toro and Velocicoaster, El Toro came out on the losing end. So, I am so happy to say this, Velocicoaster has won the U.S. Intamin Coasters bracket. I mean, this really was a landslide. Um, it really wouldn't have mattered anyway, because if Caleb and I voted, landslide. If you, the viewers, vote, landslide. But we let the viewers vote, and Velocicoaster won 80% to 20%. So that just tells you how much Velocicoaster is better. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm, I'm infamous for having my opinion on El Toro. In my opinion, El Toro is definitely uh, not the best coaster. I'll say that. doesn't make my top 25, but there's that. But Velocicoaster is the crown, it takes the crown for the best U.S. Intamin coasters. So that is it for the segments of this podcast, and really, well, I think it's about time to end the podcast. I know uh, you may be a little disappointed, it's definitely a shorter podcast, but to make this more of a quality-focused uh, um, episode, uh, this is actually the shortest one we've ever done, um, 
I'm about to end it a little bit early, uh, just making this episode a little more quality, because I feel like I would just ramble on if we continued, um, but yeah, there's that, uh, obviously a shorter episode, but it's gonna be a better episode next week, because Caleb will hopefully be here, so we'll just go with that, but that is gonna be the end for the episode, episode 9 of the podcast, which is absolutely crazy, um, so crazy that we're here already, and we're still in season one uh who knows what we'll be doing for the end of season one we'll just have to wait and see but that'll end it for the podcast hope y'all enjoyed uh make sure to stay tuned for everything um all the podcasts coming up and more of the episodes coming up this season possibly next season we'll have to see um yeah and go sh- follow all of our socials uh you can find uh, my links to all my socials on link tree uh on my instagram account so just go check that out uh, through the link and obviously Caleb at Backyard Thrills even though it didn't make it a little unfortunate but uh, make sure to go check him out check him out as well so I hope you all enjoyed see you next time and see ya